Hello once again YouTube, Chris the Nightbringer here, bringing you some Feed the Beast Ultimate action. When we left off, uh, I think we had uh, worked a little bit on the stoves in the last episode, and uh, quite amazingly, I have uh, just acquired all the materials to continue building the stoves. Also, a few other arrangements have been made, as you can see behind me, my sorting facility, or temporary sorting facility, has been upgraded a little bit with some added capacity to the top. It's uh, still unfinished, and... Um, in the future, this will not really exist um, per se, but uh, it's just like at the moment I need to sort my items, and I have a billion items, so I need this uh, facility behind me to take care of all that. Um, what else is there? Also, uh, I don't know if I ever really went over this stuff, but um, basically this is my mixer and uh, factorization uh, process. out of here ink sack nobody wants you um <laughs> uh these are my factorization and uh or tripling processes going on over here and i don't think i ever really went over this stuff but i had to change how i how i set it up basically this liquid transposer is throwing a, a bucket of water into this and it's mixing it with this ore in order to get me uh some clean ore chunks which go into this and it gets further processed and eventually this triples my ore output um not really important right now because today we're going to be building we're going to be doing more building today uh we're going to finish up some of the stuff on the stoves it's not going to finish the stoves completely but we are going to do a significant portion of the work that has to be done on the stoves so uh in case you don't know uh well, nobody knows, but uh, <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, there's this new uh, shipping and receiving area, outbound shipping that I've set up uh, from this particular base. Basically, anything that's supposed to be leaving, going to uh, build sites is uh, going into these boxes. So I know what goes where and what goes to what. So here we have some steam turbines. This is literally a stack of t steam turbine housing. I don't know if you know this, but that costs... To get one of these things running costs like over 100 steel ingots, and I need um, I need uh, 32 of them. I need 32 times like 100. That's like 3,200 steel ingots. Holy shnikes! Anyway, um, these are parts for the blowing engines, uh, which is like nowhere near the amount of parts that I'll actually need for the blowing engines. This is just a minor portion of them uh this is an extra crate for that here's uh the materials if i need any for the rest of the blowing engine house which uh you may remember is not finished yet and we're getting close to getting all the materials for that but um all the materials for that are already out there and here are the materials that we'll be using for the rest of the uh the stoves and mostly this is uh panels and uh, a few other things uh in order to finish um the catwalks that kind of go around the entire thing, as well as uh, the elevator parts for the elevator that is attached to it. And now we will be building catwalks that go all the way to the top of the stoves, uh, which we'll do in this episode. But um, stoves like this are also usually accompanied by like an, a fully automated working elevator. So uh, we'll be building that too. It looks a little funky, but it's kind of cool. I'll build it anyway. Why not? YOLO. Um, so yeah, let's get over there. Uh, I threw some stuff in the ender pouch so that I had extra storage. That's the wrong pouch. And that stuff isn't getting taken away. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's head on over to the stoves. And uh, we'll get cracking. Look at all these different waypoints I have. Teleport to... Bam. Alright, so we're here. We're at the stoves. I should have everything on me. Yep, okay, so... We're here, we're ready to build, and the first thing we're going to be taking care of is some of the catwalks at the top. So we're going to drop off some of the stuff we picked up uh, into this chest here, and let me pick up some of it. I need my food, I need my chainsaw, I need this. I might need these saws, just in case. We won't be building the elevator yet. 
but a lot of this stuff is for the elevator to get it all functioning and there's some pretty cool stuff I came up with while I was building it so hopefully we'll get to that pretty quickly because I don't really want to spend too much time building catwalks um, of course this segment of the video would be sped will be sped up uh, so you won't have to worry about that going on for too much longer this random idling around and chit chat that you will be experiencing with me as you watch this video will stop once we actually get on with it so let me throw in the last of this junk and get rid of that and let's see if this can get organized did i miss anything no this should be all the uh iron covers we need for the catwalks at the top at least so let's get up here and let's see if we can get this the catwalks around this uh are pretty big and i'll build the first one while i'm still talking to you and then i'll cut to uh some uh some like super high speed shit or some some crazy cocaine uh stuff so yeah basically these are just like a little circular platform around the base of each smokestack and uh that's mostly for maintenance if i ever have to come up here and work on a smokestack i can easily access it now rea in reality these smokestacks should have like little ladder prongs on them but there's no way to do that with these blocks so unfortunately if i ever have to reach the top of the smokestack i'm gonna have to uh use a um jetpack unfortunately but uh other than that who cares uh oh did i mess that up no i didn't okay and uh these smokes these no not these smoke stacks what am i talking about these uh scaffolding uh and uh catwalks uh extend across the entire thing and uh then there's a staircase in the middle that we'll be building too but i'll speed that up because that's a really long process so yeah uh all right so yeah um pretty much explains what the hell I'm doing right here so I'm gonna cut to some dope ass music something I'd like to mention about the build itself is that you may have questioned this in the last episode um, why I'm building with wool instead of like metal and the reason I'm doing certain things like I'm the way I'm doing is because I want the build to look good I don't want a build entirely made out of iron blocks that's just ugly to me that's why I've decided to use the wool because they actually look like steel that's been uh, riveted onto a structure um, if you look at real pictures of stoves and maybe I'll pop a picture of the stoves that I'm building up uh, as an overlay on this video, you'll see what I mean when you look at the actual steel that's surrounding these cylinders, these towers, it's all riveted. And that's actually what the texture looks like when you look at it. It has this really weird edge to it. So that's why I'm doing things the way I do them. I'm using wool because it looks real, not because it would be built with wool. I mean, that just doesn't make sense. You don't build something that burns uh, furiously. Uh, made out of wool I mean like what that just doesn't make sense another thing is uh, color the uh, steel on um, one of what I consider my favorite blast furnaces now after I've done all this research is Bethlehem and all of the buildings uh, made of steel there were pretty much black because uh, that's the way it was either painted or the way it looked when it was finished being built um, and I really like the color scheme and you'll notice that I have a lot of yellow wool around um, and in the future you'll see uh, me putting the yellow wool on the um, staircases as the railings and that was like a color scheme that these uh, this particular steel mill did which was um, using uh, black steel and yellow railings for all of their structures and it looked pretty good to me so I stuck with that uh, no reason to differentiate and frankly there isn't a set color scheme for how these buildings look usually it just looks like rusted metal now because all of these structures are very old the ones that I'm building um, they were all made in like the 1900s and the late uh, 20 the early 20th century um, <laughs> so a lot of these buildings are actually old some of them have been decommissioned and turned into like museums I know one of them is like a casino right now and it's just really weird it's like this is what made America America back then or uh, for all I know, any place in the world, it's just, just like a massive industry that almost suddenly died, um, which was steel making. And uh, yeah, it's very interesting. It's very 
grungy uh, work and I like the way it looks so that's why I decided to go with this build first. Right now I should be putting up the structure for the staircase and it's going super super fast I realize that and that's simply because building the staircase was terrible. I hated it. I hate building the stairs because you have to do it with slabs and building with micro blocks is a bitch because in order for you to place a block a certain way sometimes you have to have another block to hit like attach it to it's just really obnoxious um and i that's why you see all the dirt uh, appearing and disappearing is because i had to put place all the dirt for the nice self to actually be able to build these structures it's very tedious work um got really boring uh I can tell you right now that the entire process of building this particular episode took about an hour and a half, so it wasn't totally um, a long, uh, arduous uh, amount of time, but um, it was still like the same repetitive thing over and over again, and I just sit there with my iPod and listen to music while I do the same crap over and over again. I can't watch TV because my computer is basically my TV and I need all the power I can get in order to run uh, and or film uh, Minecraft because um, surprisingly my computer can't handle all that so well sometimes. Uh, now I'm starting the base for the uh, the elevator shaft and in the future the actual uh, something about the elevator is going to have to change because like I said in the previous video I uh, build all of this stuff on a test map or I test dimensions on a test map um, a creative uh, map and um, it helps me figure out uh, uh, quantities of materials that I'll be needing as well as things like uh, the dimensions for certain buildings and after I built the next portion uh, of the build I realized that something on the elevator had to change right there I'm placing all the um, the rail that's uh, for the minecart which will act as the elevator itself and Jesus Christ, I didn't realize how fast this thing was moving. It's going so fast you don't even know what I'm doing. I don't have time to talk about it. Um, it should slow down here though, because uh, I set the, the speed a different part on this. And uh, right here I'm building some really cool looking... Uh, um, God, what is it called? Transformer? Not like a fucking Autobot, so shut your mouth. But um, <laughs> uh, a transformer as in like an electrical transformer on the back of a building or something and I didn't really need it because it was an elevator it didn't require a lot of power but um, I needed a way to hide all the mechanical goodness behind it so I had to build something so uh, I made that um, right there and uh, there you have it that's uh, the transformer um, had some technical difficulties figuring out how to get it to work because uh, on the test map I actually got it wrong but um, I figured it out and it works fine and you'll see that functioning in a few moments um, so yeah, all in all, build went totally great. It came out exactly as planned. Like I mentioned in the last video, this build is actually like twice as tall or twice as big as it should be, and <laughs> that's not entirely good because um, uh, it actually means that I placed this building too close to the other building that uh, we started a few days ago or a few weeks ago or whatever the fuck time it was, um, the brick building. Uh, here I realized I was missing one single part one fucking part out of this build and I had to go back and uh, get a tin block because I needed a tin block to place there um, and then I finally get it working and it all worked out fine um, but I made it look real nice it's kind of cool I like the look of this transformer thing uh, I'm also kind of color coding tin to be the color or the material that I use for all my electric stuff that goes on around this build um, so you'll see, you'll notice that as the build progresses that certain materials and certain things are color coded so that um, I don't get confused because there's going to be so many pipes going through these buildings in the end. And like I said in the last video, we're going to be going back and forth between builds, adding details, changing things because I'm going to have to. Uh, I can't build the entire thing at once. Uh, I have to do it over a course of many, many weeks and that warrants uh, adjustments. Uh, just like a real life uh, architect would or builder or something and it's just something that's kind of neat uh, it gets lets us like add on things if we have to and stuff so uh, I don't mind it too much it's usually not too big of a problem
And there we have it. The elevator is now complete with the minecart inside. Uh, ignore that, but when we get in and push this button, it'll take us all the way to the top. Check that out. Freaking fantastic. We can then undock from the minecart. We can exit through this doorway, which leads to the catwalks outside. Or we could go back inside. Hopefully. Go back inside and climb this ladder. This is a double purpose rail track. It's an elevator track as well as a ladder and it allows the minecart to travel up its entire length. And uh, I'll show you how that's done in a moment, how it's powered. And uh, we can uh, come up here, adjust this stuff if we need to, or we can uh, open up these doors and go outside. And uh, for some reason, on these elevators, there's always like a second balcony. Uh, I don't know why, but uh, I thought it looked kind of cool and it made it look more industrial because there's even more catwalks. Uh, I didn't film the catwalk building because it's just so much stuff to build and it's it's ridiculous to uh, film all of that. It, it took me literally like an hour to film it and oh look, I'm not even done because it's freaking broken here. La 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 la. Um, <laughs> so, uh, excuse me while I fix this real quick. It's getting night time. Uh, and there. So uh, now time for the final sweep. Uh, one last... Uh, for some reason, the, uh, the elevators also have like this really corny uh, roof on it. Uh, I don't know why, but whatever. So um, check this sheet out. And there we have it. We've completed this portion of the stoves. As you can see, all the scaffolding and staircase has been done. Those smoking blocks are blasting away, producing some very nice pollution for us. The uh, back of the elevator has a very nice uh, transformer, which is supplying all that technical shizzle-wizzle. Oh god, look at that glitch, holy shit. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, so that's what we completed for this episode. We aren't done with the stoves, in the future we'll be doing a lot more with them, but we have to move on to other things before we can do that, uh, such as the blast furnaces themselves, and then we can add on uh, even more piping and technical shizwas to these buildings. So, I've been uh, Chris the Nightbringer. Uh, thanks you for watching. Comment, rate, favorite, subscribe. Tell me what you think of this video. Tell me what you think of it so far because it's really starting to shape up into the beginnings of a magnificent factory. Uh, click the link at the end of the video to watch the next episode and I'll see you guys next time. What else is there? Also, uh, I don't know if I ever really went over this stuff, but um, basically this is my mixer and uh, factorization uh, process. So a few other arrangements have been made, as you can see behind me, my sorting facility or temporary sorting facility has been upgraded a little bit with some added capacity to the top. It's uh, still unfinished and um, in the future this will not really exist um, per se, but uh, it's just like at the moment I need to sort my items and I have a billion items, so I need this uh, facility behind me to take care of all that. out of here ink sack nobody wants you um <laughs> uh these are my factorization and uh or tripling processes going on over here and i don't think i ever really went over this stuff but Hello once again YouTube, Chris the Nightbringer here bringing you some Feed the Beast Ultimate action. When we left off, uh, I think we had uh, worked a little bit on the stoves in the last episode, and uh, quite amazingly I have uh, just acquired all the materials to continue building the stoves. Also, I had to change how I, how I set it up. Basically, this liquid transposer is throwing a, a bucket of water into this, and it's mixing it with this ore in order to get me uh, some 
clean ore chunks which go into this and it gets further processed and eventually this triples my ore output um not really important right now because today we're going to 